You said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. Televangelist pastors are some of the biggest charlatans we'll see on television and social media. I decided to make this video after watching the excellent reporting by Lisa Guerrero with Inside Edition when she interviewed Kenneth Copeland exiting a venue. What I find most interesting is how much these snake oil salesmen have in common with the fake gurus popping up everywhere on social media. A gut high quality conviction about which there's no retreat. And you know. The idea of snake oil as a remedy began when Clark Stanley's snake oil liniment began selling near the turn of the 19th century. As legend has it, the Chinese used actual snake oil after a hard day's work on the Transcontinental Railroad to cure any ailments and pain. Clark Stanley saw an opportunity to profit by selling this special elixir to anyone in pain. Televangelist Jesse Duplantis is hoping to take the word of Jesus to new heights with help from a $54 million private jet. What Televangelists and social media fake gurus have in common is that they all sell snake oil to the masses. They have this solution to cure you of your most important problem. Fake gurus on social media are here to solve your financial problems by offering you an opportunity to learn how to make six figures a month after taking their course. Televangelists will teach you how to bring financial prosperity into your life by solidifying your faith with donations to the church. Don't struggle with your rent. Mm. Relax. I have a covenant with God. The answer isn't unemployment or figuring out ways to bring jobs back, it's relaxing. Somehow God is going to pay your rent, all you have to do is relax. If you'll let me in your, if you'll let me in that house, I'll pay the rent. Baby, there's no use in you worrying about it. I'll come in, I'll, I'll take care of all, of all the costs, I'll pay off your house, I'll take, what do you have to do? Listen and quit worrying about it. Quit crying around about, I don't know what I no, that did, no, 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 no. Kenneth Copeland doesn't have to worry about rent because he makes tens of millions of dollars every year selling snake oil. Let's examine all of the similarities between prosperity preachers and fake gurus. What prosperity preachers and fake gurus do is present a very visual graphic of their life as proof of success of the system. Prosperity preachers have personal jets, mansions, drive the most expensive cars, and are always found dressing in expensive suits. Fake gurus, funny enough, do the same thing. It's important for customers to have a visual element to see that the system works in order for full belief to occur. Yes, in the name of Jesus, for you said, in 2002, I'm sending you new partners who are very strong financially and they will obey you. And Prosperity preachers paint a picture for you that if you invest in your faith by sending money to the false prophet on stage, that God will return that money to you in an exponential manner. God wants you to succeed and because you're investing in him, he will invest back into you by bringing you plenty of material wealth. Kenneth Copeland. He even has his own airport next to his lovely mansion in Newark, Texas. Copeland actually has two private jets, a $20 million Citation 10 and a Gulfstream 5 jet. Big gurus also need you to believe that their system can bring you financial success so you can buy into their teachings. Lamborghinis and private flights on Instagram will do just that. Prosperity preachers use jets not for personal gain, but because they want to get the word out for their teachings. They only have a private jet because flying commercial is full of peasants. Uh, excuse me, they don't fly commercial because flying private allows them to spread their message to everyone around the globe. Believing God for that Citation 10. For a brand new jet, debt free. I needed that jet. The one I had was too slow and it, it, I couldn't get out of the United States with it. I needed to go international and I needed to go fast. What's hard to see on the surface but becomes clear as day when digging a little deeper is that prosperity preachers are insanely greedy. They aren't preachers to help people, they do it for massive financial gain. And then they justify this behavior by letting you know that they're helping people. Sure, a brand new jet, debt free, I needed that jet. 
If your goal is to help those in need, do you really need multiple private jets? Do you need to be driving a car that could feed a neighborhood for a year? The donations to the church go towards building these charlatans brands up even more with expenses going to TV deals, production companies, and material wealth for brand image. These preachers care first about having a successful brand with massive material wealth, and then care second about having a public image of helping the poor. I have a feeling that somebody that wants a credit card debt wiped out, that if you'll use your faith as you sow, as you sow the thousand on a credit card, as you use your faith, God's gonna wipe out your credit card indebtedness. They disguise this greed by claiming they help the poor and do great things for the community, which I'm sure they do, but they also exist within the super rich status class because of how they manipulate their followers into donating and buying their regurgitated self-help books. These preachers will make claims that they spend money how God wants them to spend the money. And even worse, they will use the material wealth as an example for why their followers should believe in prosperity gospel. If it works for them, it will magically work for everyone. Kenneth Copeland's ministry mentor, Oral Roberts, one time asked for donations totaling $8 million within three months or God would send him home. And his manipulative sales tactics worked and he did not pass away. He raised $9 million. Fake gurus will mention that they made a lot of money using their system and now they just want to help you. They made all their money and now just want to pass on the knowledge. Every sales pitch comes with mention of just wanting to help. They no longer want to make money running a business, of course. They would rather run ads on social media platforms and deal with customer service complaints in order to earn money. Charlatan preachers and fake gurus are not here to help you. They want to build up a huge image, sell products, and make a lot of money. Helping you comes after after serious profit. One of the most popular charlatans is Creflo Dollar. I'm saying this because most people would probably not pick up on it, but that, that's not his real name. I know it's a surprise and all, but he did change his name, Creflo Dollar. Derek Moneyberg, Jason Bond, Jason Capital, the Trillion Dollar Man. I have to admit that Creflo Dollar was the only preacher I found that had a fake name as obvious as Dollar. But I had to add some humor in the middle of this video. All these charlatans create a persona of massive success and will sometimes use their name as an entry point for you to buy into their image. The prosperity gospel preachers gain large followings because one of their core teachings is that God will bring you material wealth if you invest in him. I've had some investments and they've done very well. I've never had the investment that I've had when I invested in the work of the Lord. By investing in the church and proving your faith, God will in turn send financial success your way. God wants everyone to prosper, they'll say. God wants you to fly a private jet, drive a Rolls Royce, and be rich. God in the plane that God so graciously gave us, we're flying home. As I was going home, the Lord, real quickly, he said, Jesse, do you like your plane? Now, you know, I thought that's an odd statement. He gave, I said, well, certainly, Lord. He said, do you really like it? Most of the fake gurus we're spotting now only focus on getting rich, financial success, material wealth, invest in their system, and they will bring wealth to you. Fake gurus and charlatan preachers both act as the medium to you getting rich. Send money to them as a donation or as a customer of their course. That will lead to riches. But you and I know who is actually getting rich. These charlatan preachers will let you know all the time that they have special communication with their deity who will send them direct messages in their head. Magically, they will always be great decisions with great financial gain. Somehow, they have a direct connection with the all-knowing God who sends them answers when they have questions. And I thought, well, yes, Lord. He said, then he said this, so that's it? I didn't know how to handle that for me. I went, what? He said, you're going to let your faith stagnate? And when he said that, that shocked me. I went, whoa, wait. I literally unbuckled my seatbelt, my plane, I stood up. My pilots looked around and said, do you need something? I said, no, no, I'm talking to God right now. This sets up an environment where their followers believe they have special powers. This inevitably leads to the followers wanting to buy into whatever they're selling. Package the donations as a way to give back and receive prosperity, and you have a powerful sales pitch. Fake gurus always have a unique opportunity of some loophole in the system to make money. They will claim to have special knowledge of how to run some system for huge financial gain and no one else has figured it out yet. And you need to buy in now before everyone else figures it out. Fake gurus use false testimonials all the time on their sales pages, leading me to believe that nearly every single testimonial from a fake guru selling a get-rich-quick scheme is fake. Prosperity preachers don't rely on testimonials of other people too often, but they rely on their 
own testimonial. God brought wealth to me in the form of private jets and multiple mansions, so of course it can happen to you too. But here is one form of a fake testimonial for the preacher, Benny Hinn, showing off his superpowers from God himself. Televangelists will always let you know that it's in your mind to create wealth. You need to have faith in the Lord to bring you prosperity. You need to donate and believe that he will bring you wealth. In your mind, you need to have full belief that he will magically help you overcome challenges in life. Repentance, like the most literal definition of the word, means to change your mind. So imagine all the stuff we put on repentance, all the penance you have to do, all the work. But when Jesus was talking about repent, he was literally telling people to change your mind. Because if you can change your mind, you can change your life because it goes mind hold, heart hold, foothold, stronghold. Yeah. Fake gurus will typically spend the first couple of modules in their course or book on mindset. They never elaborate on how to fix your mindset or give you access to professional resources to actually get your mind in a place to achieve success or heal from trauma. You just have to believe in what they say. The prosperity preachers will promise you that what they're doing is right and what they're doing is exactly what God wants them to do. Look at all of that community service they are doing at the church. Well, this is a deflection to how the money is actually being spent. The money is being used to build the brand of the preachers. When the brand is big enough, the donations from the church and the book sales will allow the preacher to live a life similar to a top athlete or CEO. Here's the Kenneth Copeland Ministries donations page. Assuming these numbers are accurate, which is unlikely, 27% of the donations go to Worldwide TV, 12% to conventions and meetings, 11% to general and administrative, and 17% to ministry materials. That's 67% of the budget going to expenses that build up the preacher's brand. Remember that these churches are generating tens of millions of dollars with a small staff and expense budget. Nearly all of the money is going to the preacher in some way. Lisa Guerrero is truly an awesome investigative journalist. Here she is confronting Kenneth Copeland about his spending decisions and lavish lifestyle. Uh, why you're living such a lifestyle of luxury off of church donations. Ma'am, I don't think we have time for this. Thank you. Thank you why won't much. you answer our questions? A hotel employee. When confronted on the matter, of course the preacher can't share any private information. Doing so would not be beneficial to anyone involved. Everyone who doesn't believe in these charlatans can see right through them. They aren't transparent about the church's finances because being transparent will pull away the curtain in front of the mirage, leaving an exposed snake oil salesman paying for a highly desired lifestyle. How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Isn't it the business of your donors? Listen, you kind of caught me off guard here, okay? He made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. These preachers didn't join this business because of some calling from God. They did it because of the potential profit. They're all savvy businessmen just wearing a different hat. Really ask yourself, if these preachers had a maximum income every year of $50,000, would they still be doing this? Of course not. Fake gurus are just as opaque because if customers knew the real numbers of their business opportunities, then no one would buy the course. Click here to find out how Pauly Profit turned $2,000 into $20 million in six weeks with this secret system on buying real estate with no money down. If customers had all data available when making a purchase decision, no one would be buying courses from fake gurus. They rely on the mirage and lack of transparency. How many private jets do you have? Kenneth Copeland is always a jovial and positive guy, but he seems to get a little attitude when you simply ask about his use of church funds to pay for multi-million dollar jets and houses. For the conclusion of this video, we're going to highlight some examples of these preachers, exemplifying why I consider them to be complete charlatans. Here's an Instagram post of Toby Attic Boyega, who is no longer the preacher at his church. There are claims that the church mainly targets young black people in poorer parts of London, exploiting them for financial gain. Personally pray over those. Do you ever see them? Oh, yes. You do? When do you see them? When do you see your prayer requests? Well, that is between me and my partners. Do you ever see them? Do you ever touch them? Do you ever read them? Yes, I do. Again, according to Spradlin, how much of this mail and correspondence they see and or pray over? Zero percent. Zero. Zero. Kenneth Copeland told his followers that they could send him money in the mail and he would personally bless them and God would solve their problems. I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. I execute judgment on you, Satan. I demand, I demand, I demand a vaccination.
information to come immediately. Yes. Joel Osteen may be one of the worst snake oil salesmen and I didn't even get to him during this video. That's how many of these people there are. He kept his mega church closed during Hurricane Harvey in Houston because he needed a few days to evaluate the risk to his money not because of flooding. Here's Carl Lentz talking about God's mercy on sinners, which is important because he's no longer the pastor at his church because of his personal affairs. If I, you know, had a really bad night or if I had a really bad moment, um, my repentance is as quick as me going, Jesus, change my mind, forgive me. And it's a, that the Bible says God's mercies are new every morning. If we had transparency with these preachers, we'd be able to see that their main goal is profit and living lavish lifestyles. Want to know the worst part of this lifestyle? It's all tax free. Yes, the private jets, the houses, the cars, all in the church's name so they don't have to pay any taxes. Thank you so much for watching. Ha, 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 ha.